Hello and welcome to this little tutorial on how to work with a JavaScript code in a Moodle database activity. In this particular example, I have a community service log where students are adding entries for any service that they've done um, at any uh, event, uh, loca locality, or with any company, organization, NGO, and um, they record the number of hours they spent in a particular activity. Um, there are various uh, pieces of information that are being collected, but it doesn't have to be exactly what we have here. But as long as you have some numbers that need to be added up, um, this tutorial might be helpful um, to sort out how that should happen. So in this particular instance here, we see the database um, has three entries. There was a, a service event for a health fair, for two hours, a Habitat for Humanity event for five and a half hours, and admissions interviews uh, that took two and a half hours. And this has been totaled up to 10 hours, which is correct. All right, so this totals up to 10. Uh, and just to show that this um, would update if changes are made, let me make a change. Uh, I'm going to use the cog icon to edit this entry and change it from two hours to, I don't know, let's say three and a half. Okay, let's say 3.5, um, just for fun. And then I am going to save and view. This will bring me to the single entry, so you can see, and this has been saved and has updated. Let's come back to the list view. And here you can see Oh, there we go, 3.5 hours, and this has totaled up to 11.5. So our little JavaScript that is adding up these numbers is working. Let's take a look under the hood. What's happening? So the code is um, working on, the code has been added to the list view template, and um, there's also code in the JavaScript template. Those two are working together. So let me explain. For each entry, this cell, or this particular cell of the table, is um, being recorded as to how many rows there are. It's going to be you know, row number one, row number two, row number three. So it's taking hours um, in row one, hours in row two, hours in row three. So it checks how many total rows there are. And then based on the total number of rows, it kind of says, okay, well, let me count up how many rows we have. And then for each row, I'm going to put the number into a variable, uh, into a basket. And then my little function is going to add up everything in my basket and give me my total hours. So I'm going to click on templates. I'm on the list view, I'm going to click on templates, and that should take me to the list template, the list template, which is right here. And uh, I'm looking at this in a uh, with the editor disabled, so that I'm looking at it in plain text, okay? So the repeated entry, this is what gives us each row. So for the row, we have the first column, second column, and so on. And the last column, the TD, uh, this last one here, which has the hours. This is what's being added up, right? And we have to identify this with a name of some sort. So it's a class and the name is single service. So it's adding up each single service for each row. And then it's going to put it into the footer of the table, right? The footer of the table and it's putting it into the cell called total hours. So whatever the total hours um, sum is, is going to be written into the cell. Okay, so let's take a look at this again. Whatever item you're adding up, you want to give it a class name. Class equals, and then call it what you will. And that number is what is being added up multiple times, right? Okay, give it a name. Wherever your total is being put, you give that a name as well. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Now, let's go to the JavaScript template where the code is actually doing the adding. So JavaScript template, and here we are. A few lines doing a lot of work. First, we need a variable. Um, we need uh, to take the text that is written in the HTML table 
and convert it to a number that can be used for a computation. All right, so we have a variable called time spent. This is what um, we are going to put our single service hours into and add that up, cycle through, add that up. And then our total is going to be put into what we call total hours, if you recall that name, right? Total hours. So we have a function called time count. So this time count function, every time that the page loads, is going to run through and say, oh, well, let me take my time spent variable and let me check the document and find any element that has a class name of single service. There's, there's bound to be many of them um, because we are adding something. There's bound to be many of them. So we will put um, that into a cycle where we can uh, cycle through the number of different rows that there are. Okay, so single service. So take every element that has a class name of single service. And we're going to say that the total hours is going to be equal to um, every time that the time spent has a value. Okay, and in a HTML is just a way to read data from a table. Okay, data from a table. Um, so we are saying time spent for from I running from zero up to the length of the number of rows. Time spent dot length, the length of the number of rows of the table, okay, is what it's looking for. So how many single service items are there? So if it finds seven, um, then time spent dot length is actually seven. We can't put a number there because we don't know how many total rows there's gonna be at any given point in time. Every student enters as many as you know they need, right? So that's a variable number that is not set in stone. So we're saying, okay, well, however many rows there are, that's our top limit. And we're gonna start counting from zero up until that. So if we have seven rows, we're counting from zero up to six, really not to seven. Um, so we have seven items beginning from zero. So item number zero, item number one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And each time we're going to just add one item to the number of um, items we are counting. So uh, starting from zero, add that to the total hours and read what's in the inner HTML multiplied by one. Just really a way to convert that HTML written text into a number. And then total hours keeps getting incremented every time. So for as many rows as we have, we'll go through this seven times if we have uh, seven rows, right? And then once we have our total, we are going to put that value into our table. Remember, in the HTML is the way that we read the table in HTML. And so um, this is item zero because there's not many different things. Uh, there's not many rows in the total area. It's just one, the very first that we find. And usually that has a, a marker of uh, zero. So total hours in the inner HTML table is going to be equal to whatever our total value is in our computation here. All right, and that's written into it. And then when the window loads, uh, every time that the window loads, it runs this computation. So this is not really being saved into the database anywhere in the Moodle database. It's not a value that you'll find saved anywhere that you can read from and go and do something else with. It's happening in the client's window. Anytime somebody opens up this database activity, whatever is in their window, in their browser at that moment is gonna get added up. Okay, that's why it's on window load. Okay, loading the page. So let's come back here and see again. Come to the view list. And what we're saying is this item is called single service. Single service item zero, single service item one, single service item two. Okay, there are three items right now, starting from zero, one, two. Okay, and so it's saying, okay, well, we have... We're going to count 
single service item number zero put that into total hours increment our counter by one okay single service the zero plus one is equal to one so single service item number one is 5.5 okay let's add that to what we have already in our basket 3.5 plus 5.5 will give us nine and then now let's go to single service item number two because our i and this was zero this is one increment one by one so one plus one is two so our item number two is 2.5 let's add that to what we have in total hours in our basket so 9 plus 2.5 is 11.5 are there any more rows no more rows okay we've come to the end of our cycle and so now we are going to do this little bit here in the JavaScript let me just come back to show you we have cycled through everything here we've come to the end of our limit right we've come to the end of our limit there's no more rows okay let's take what we have in total hours and write it into the table in the place where our total hours should go and that is down here in the footer total hours right this is our HTML table and this is the place where we are putting our total so it's going to write this value into the cell, into the HTML table for us. So let's come back to our list view. And once again, let's just kind of make sure we understand that this is going to, this is loading and it loads. So this is where it's putting that number. Okay. Shall we try adding another row and see? Why not? Let's do that. Let's add an entry. And I am just going to write... And we're going to just say, yesterday we had um, three, let's say we had 4.5 hours of um, unpaid direct, okay, let's call it category A. So let's say it was a food, food service um, uh, sponsored by... Um, Ecumenical food country. I'm just making something up in the city of Strasbourg, and this is PA. And uh, how many participants and other healthcare professionals? Yes, but let's save and view. And we've added one more. Let's go to our list and see what happened. It. So we added um, this from 1st January. Okay, and there we go. This is being ordered by service category. So you can see the category. So we have A, and then there would be B if there would be, and then C. That's why this has um, come in the middle here, not at the end. Um, you could, of course, do it by the uh, time added, in which case this will rearrange itself and put that one at the bottom if that makes more sense for you but that's this is the way that this is sorted so you can see that it has added also um, this is working the way we expected I hope that this explanation helps let's know if you have any questions you can post in the comments and feel free to um, uh, reach out thank you bye